start with that clip. Um, you know, in December you said you were thrilled to be back. You never wanted to leave in the first place. Now that you're in uniform, it's here. It's real. You're surrounded by these guys. What's going through your mind? Basically, uh, spring training, you know, just preparing for the season. Uh, excited to be back. Obviously, this is a very talented group of guys, and uh, just honored to be a part of it. And uh, preparing for the season, just standard spring training stuff. Here in the state of the Yankees. Oh, uh, I felt like this was the best chance to uh, win world championships. That's what it's all about. Uh, obviously, you know, I played here in the past, and... and uh, Enjoyed, enjoyed myself here and had, thought we had a really good team at that time and since then they've made a, a couple of additions that I think made the team that much better so uh, I felt like if I ever got an opportunity to come back and be a part of this what's going on here I would take advantage of it and uh, that's why. None of you would be in the positions you are without wanting to be the best and then when you put the best of the best together how much do you want to be the best out of this group, and how much do you think that'll drive all of you? You want me to answer this? <laughs> you got it. <laughs> all right. Uh, In the middle. To be honest with, for me, I, I could care less what the guy ahead of me did. I want to go out there and do the best I can, regardless. I hope I hope they that you know we have shutouts every single day, no doubt about it. Uh, obviously, the better they pitch, the better our team does. That's that's great, but. Uh, whether the guy that pitched ahead of me the day before threw a complete game shutout or gave up five in the first inning, I'm still going to go out there and try to do the same thing. I want to get deep into the game, put up as many zeros as I can, and give the team a chance to win. That's that's really it for me. I I don't really try to compete against these guys. I'm trying to compete against the other team. But uh, that's the way I look at it. I mean, there's a lot of guys that look at it like, you know, they want to kind of one-up the next guy. And if that works for you and that's what brings the best out of you, that's great. I mean, more power to you. But... Uh, personally, I don't really look at it that way. I'm trying to do what I do regardless what the guy before me or behind me does. Next question. Doc, given, uh, right here. Right here. given where you were a couple of years ago, um, do you ever just want to pinch yourself as you look down the row there and see what could be part of history as the best pitching staff ever collected? I think the, we haven't thrown a single pitch as a group yet, so it's kind of <laughs> early to say that we're one of the best rotations in the, in the history of the game. I, I mean... Obviously, we're a very talented group, and there's potential for all that, but it's just that it's potential. But uh, I think uh, the best rotation I can remember is the Braves back with uh, Glavin, Smoltz, Steve Avery, uh, and Maddox. I mean, that was, I don't even remember who the fifth guy was, but those four were pretty dang good. So, uh, obviously, getting to, being from Arkansas, there wasn't really a team to follow, but, you know, the Braves were always on TBS, and you... You know, you could watch a lot of their games, and uh, I remember watching them, and that was the best rotation I can remember. Cliff and then Roy, the expectations for you guys are as high as they've ever been for the, the whole team. Uh, would anything less than a World Series win be a disappointment this year? Uh, I mean, obviously that's the ultimate goal, and, uh, you know, the first thing you got to do is get there. I mean, we got to play 162 games to get to get to the postseason, and obviously once you're in the postseason, yeah, you, you you got to win, you know, the last game to to do the ultimate. And you know, it's hard to say right now. It's disappointing not to get a World Series ring, but that's that's what we're playing for. That's what every team that's in spring training at this point should be playing for. I mean, it's uh, that's why you go out and play the game. That's what it's all about. So, uh, you know, I, I know there's expectations. There, we should have expectations in ourselves. I I probably expect more on myself than anyone expects of me, and that's that's just the competitive nature and. Uh, Yes, yeah, that's the ultimate goal, but there's a lot of things we got to take care of between now and then to make sure that happens. So uh, that's what we got to focus on. I mean, I know there's a lot of hype and a lot of, you know, everyone expects this and expects that, but that's that's in October and it's February right now. So we got a, we got a lot of work to do between now and then to give ourselves the best chance to to do that. And that's really all we can do is, is focus on what can we do today to prepare for tomorrow and let it build up to the World Series. And, uh, if we're healthy and, and, and take care of business and focus on our routines and what we need to do to prepare, then we're going to give ourselves a pretty good chance. But, you know, if we're saying right now we're going to win the World Series, that's kind of getting the cart ahead of the horse. And, uh, you know, that's, that's not really, that's for you guys to say that kind of stuff. We're focused on spring training and pre preparing and doing everything we need to do. And if we do all that, then 
we, we expect that, that to happen, but nothing's going to be given to us because we got a good rotation and great offense and, and the right people. But, you know, there's, there's a lot of things that can happen between now and then, so we need to focus on today and tomorrow, focus on tomorrow. Take us back a little bit to the, the negotiations that went on last winter. For the longest time, everybody kind of thought it was a two-team race, and nobody even talked about the Phillies. But in your own heart and mind, did you have the Phillies the team that you were going to wind up with all the time, or did that only happen because the Phillies jumped in with, you know, became a competitive bidder for you? This is where I'm at right here, so yeah. that says enough, I think. I mean, uh, I could have got more money in other places, and, you know, that really wasn't what it was all about for me. It was more about what team gave me the best chance to win world championships and over the life of the contract and I think I think this is it so um, you know obviously the Rangers was a great team and we were went back to the World Series that could have been a good option too you know, where we went to the World Series last year that could have been a great option too and the Yankees obviously with their history and what they've done you know they've that's a good option I mean there was really it was really three pretty good options to be honest with you and uh, I just honestly stepped back and Looked at each team and, and evaluated, and I felt like this is the team that's going to give me the best chance to win a win a ring, and hopefully multiple multiple rings. But uh, that was what the decision was based on. And, uh, obviously, the fans had a lot to do with it. They sell out every game. There's a lot of, you know, the the stadium's packed. There's a lot of a lot of hype every game. I mean, it's 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 a great feeling playing in that park, and uh, I wanted to come back and do some more of it. So it was Phillies all the way then. I mean, I guess, sure, sure. <laughs> yeah, Phillies all the way. <laughs> what is your expectation, any of you, for the eight guys that are going to be on the field behind you and helping you win these games? What is our expectations for the other guys that are on the field? Is that what you're asking? Yeah. How do you how do you think the the eight guys behind you are going to measure up to the expectations that you've given? To what this team can be. I don't really know how to answer that, but I'm going to try. Uh, I'm going to say I hope they prepare and come in and you know do everything they need to do to prepare. If they do that, our talent should play out. I mean, uh, we've got good pitching, we've got a good bullpen, we've got a good offense, and we play good defense. You know, if everyone comes in prepared and does what they need to do each day to to get ready for the game and takes care of business, good things should happen. I mean, it's. Uh, it's not about us five or even those eight or whatever. It's it's 25 guys, you know. We all got to contribute, and if we all do our work and prepare each day and carry our weight, good things should happen. We should uh, we should match up pretty well. Rob. All right, so who among you is the best hitter? It's me. <laughs> no, I don't know. Uh, Cliff, uh, I know it's been a couple months since you've signed, of course. Pulling the uniform back on today, though, are you, is there any element of surprise left that you're back with Philly? And secondarily, going back to those negotiations, who was it that you, first, that you first heard from in the Phillies organization, the initial phone call in the free agent derby, and when you knew you could return here, and what was your reaction at the time? What was the first question again? <laughs> the first one was simply the, any element of surprise left. No, no, I'm, I'm not surprised at all. Okay. I mean, I've, I've known I was a Philly since I signed, so um, more anticipation and anxious and ready to get here and excited to be a part of it and get it going, yeah, but uh, not surprised. I mean, uh, but uh, the first person I ho heard from, uh, my agent was talking to uh, to Ruben, and uh, yeah, and, and Scott Profrock, those, you know, that, those guys had a big, big part of that, but uh the first person I talked to, I believe, was Ruben after uh, I made my decision to sign here. But uh, I was I wasn't really in that process. It was more my agent and them working that stuff out. So uh, I'm glad they were able to to get that done. Jason, you had another question, I believe, in front. I, I think it was actually okay. Um, please raise your hand if you have a question. Jack O'Rourke in the back on the right, please. I'll just shout it out if you don't mind. Did your love of doing cheesesteaks have anything to do with you coming back to Philadelphia? Uh, 
I like Philly cheesesteaks, but that had nothing to do with me coming back to Philadelphia. <laughs> You reflect on the kind of the roller coaster nature of last year with the, the trade, the injury early in the season, struggling team, and then another trade, and you're in the World Series and the free agency, and, and how nice it is to have that past you and kind of have the stability of looking forward and knowing knowing where you're going to be. Uh, yeah, obviously last year um, I got traded from Philly to, to Seattle to start the season out. And, you know, there was a lot of expectations there for that organization, and uh, I started out the season hurt, like you said, and. Uh, that's never good when you, you know, first first with an organization and you start out injured. That's that's not sending a very good sign to them. So wasn't really happy about that. But fortunately, it didn't last long. I got missed a few starts, got to uh, get with the team, and I pitched well, but uh, the team didn't perform as, as expected, and uh, things like that happen. And uh, fortunately, I was able to be traded to a team that was in a good position, you know, with the Rangers. And, you know, they were in first place, and... Uh, in good position to make the postseason, and uh, obviously did that. I got a chance to go back to the World Series, so it was, uh, it was a great experience for me. And uh, after that, obviously free agent, and here I go again with the Phillies. But uh, yeah, looking back, I mean, it's I enjoyed it. I enjoyed every bit of it, from from Cleveland to here to Seattle to Texas. I mean, I'm glad I got to go through that to get to experience different organizations, how how each organization does things a little bit different. And, get to play with some of the best players in the game from you know Victor Martinez and Travis Hafner and Grady Sizemore in Cleveland to to here with Ryan Howard, Utley, you know Cole and uh, you know obviously to Seattle with you know Ichiro and Felix Hernandez and then to Texas with Josh Hamilton, Ian Kinsler, Mike Young, I mean some of the best players in the game and uh, it was a great experience without being traded I never could have got to do any of that I could have obviously would have still been with the Indians and then free agency but um, I was glad to get those opportunities to, to bounce around and play with different organizations, get to play in back-to-back -back World Series with two different teams. It was, it was a fun ride, and hopefully I get to get a chance to be a little more stable about, about that process and get to uh, experience some more World Series with, uh, with this team and hopefully multiple, multiple times. And uh, I definitely want that ring. That's what it's all about. Like, like Roy said, that's, that's the ultimate goal. But, uh, there is a process you got to go through to get there, and, and we're going to not lose sight of that. But uh, that's definitely the ultimate prize, and uh, that's what we're hungry for, and that's what we want. So, and that's what every single team in baseball should be thinking the same thing right now. You know, at this point in time, we're all even. You know, it's a, that's why you play the games, and you know, if you if you if you're looking too far down the road, you know, it's uh, you're getting in trouble. But that definitely is the ultimate goal. But we got to keep our sights close, and what can we do today to prepare for tomorrow, and and, uh, and so forth. So, yeah. We have time for one more question, Bill Mann. If you look around, the microphone will be right there for you. Yeah, Cliff, you had said uh, before you had said that the Phillies were the team that you really wanted to go to, but you also said that um, uh, that uh, Ruben was talk the first person to talk to your agent. I guess it was. How far along in the process was that, and was there a point? where you said to your agent, um, let's engage the Phillies in this thing, let them know that I want to go there. Was it was that ever part of the equation? Obviously for me to be a Philly, there was a point in time when I said talk to the Phillies, I want to go there. So I, I don't remember on the timeline, I can't I'm not gonna break down the timeline of when I was talking to this team and that team and so forth. I mean uh, it's the first time I was a free agent. I enjoyed the process. It was it was you know, it was a learning experience and a lot of fun, in my opinion. But uh, yeah, there was obviously a point in time where I said, "Engage the Phillies. Let's let's make that happen. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here." So uh, I hope that answers your question. I don't. I don't. They definitely were late into the process. They were. They were that, and they were. Uh, they kept it. They kept it hush hush. You know, and. Um, I think that helped their chances. Obviously, it worked out. You know, the way they went about it, you know, nobody really knew what was going on until the last second. And uh, obviously, it was beneficial because it worked. So uh, it wasn't it wasn't publicized. There wasn't you know media coverage of all that. It was it was, uh, and I I think that's the way it should be done. You know, in my opinion, there's way too much out in the media of uh, negotiations and stuff like that. That's stuff that should be private, and uh, that's how it was in this in this instant.